There are moments in history when the world changes in the blink of an eye, leaving scars that never truly fade from humanity's memory. The Black Death, also known as the Great Mortality or the Great Pestilence, was one such catastrophe. It was a shadow that swept invisibly across the cities and villages of Europe in the mid-14th century, bringing with it a terror unlike anything people had ever known. In just six years, from 1347 to 1353, this nightmare claimed the lives of an estimated 50 to 60 percent of Europe's population. Families were shattered, entire communities collapsed, and a whole continent was transformed beyond recognition. For many who survived, the old world vanished along with the loved ones they had lost. But the devastation of the Black Death went far beyond the sheer number of dead. It shook the foundations of faith, shattered the established order, and left a trauma that lingered across generations. And yet, through all the pain, one question continued to haunt scholars, historians, and scientists for more than 600 years. Where did this pandemic truly come from? What was the first spark that ignited this wave of destruction? This remains one of the greatest mysteries in all of history, a riddle that only recently, thanks to the persistence of modern science, we have begun to answer. For centuries, the origins of the Black Death were shrouded in darkness. People only knew of the fields littered with corpses, the ruined cities, and the all-consuming fear that gripped an entire continent. But no one knew where this tidal wave of death had truly begun. And then, as time passed, the first real clue to this mystery appeared. Not in the mass graves of Europe, but in a place almost no one would have thought to look. A silent stone slab deep in the mountains of Central Asia, bearing a single word carved into its surface. Pestilence. The story of the search for the plague's origins is one of persistence and the combined effort of many generations. Thanks to archaeological excavations in the 19th century and later, the miraculous advances of modern DNA analysis, researchers have worked together to piece together the scattered fragments of history. Each generation left behind a trace, a small discovery, and together they have slowly unlocked the door to one of humanity's greatest disasters. None of those scientists could have imagined that the answer they had been seeking for centuries was actually hidden among the ancient graves of a tiny community on the fringes of the Silk Road. And it was here, in this unlikely place, that the journey to uncover the mystery would truly begin. In the summer of 1886, on the quiet slopes along the northern shore of Lake Issa-Kul in Kyrgyzstan, a team of Russian archaeologists began excavating two small cemeteries near the village of Karajigakh. This was a remote land where time seemed to move more slowly, and the memory of ancient trade routes still lingered on every weathered stone. At Karajigesh, the archaeologists uncovered evidence of a once-thriving Nestorian Christian community that had flourished thanks to the bustling trade along the Silk Road. The people here were not merely inhabitants of an isolated village, but merchants who helped connect east and west, bringing with them goods, culture, and the stories that traveled alongside caravans across the desert. Beneath the tranquil earth of this burial ground, they unearthed dozens of tombstones dating from 1338 to 1339, nearly a decade before the plague was first recorded in Europe. Several of these gravestones, inscribed in ancient Syriac, told of something unusual, a large number of deaths occurring in a short span of time, with many stones citing a single cause, pestilence. Ugh. This discovery was at first only recorded in the pages of archaeological journals, but it would turn out to be the first piece of a mystery that would linger for centuries. After the excavations at Karajigak, the archaeologists carefully documented their findings and transferred the remains and inscribed stones to a museum in St. Petersburg. Over time, these ancient bones lay quietly on wooden shelves in the darkness of the archives, and the pages of those archaeological journals gradually faded into obscurity among the thousands of documents from the previous century. More than a hundred years later, the fate of these nameless remains would change unexpectedly thanks to the curiosity of a modern historian, Philip Slavin, of the University of Stirling in Scotland. While researching the economic and environmental history of the Black Death era, Slavin happened to rediscover the old archaeological records. What caught his attention was a haunting number. In just the years 1338 and 1339, that small community had lost more than 118 people with many tombstones clearly listing the cause as pestilence. For a once prosperous trading community, this could not have been a coincidence. Slavin began to suspect that this might, in fact, be the true starting point of the pandemic that would one day transform all of Europe. But to turn this suspicion into historical fact, he needed something that previous generations of historians had never possessed. Scientific evidence, specifically, the genetic traces preserved within those ancient remains, 
When those ancient records were finally brought back into the light, it was as if history itself had been waiting for this moment all along. For the first time, thanks to the advances of modern science, humanity could confront directly a mystery that had haunted us for centuries. At the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Germany, teams of geneticists had been quietly working for years to unravel the genetic family tree of Yersinia pestis, the bacterium responsible for the plague. They had collected and analyzed thousands of DNA samples, not only from ancient victims, but also from rodents and fleas all over the world. Through this vast trove of data, the scientists discovered that in the early 14th century, Yersinia pestis underwent a turning point in its evolutionary history. Suddenly, it split into four major branches, and one of those branches became the very culprit that unleashed the terror of the Black Death across Europe. This genetic family tree became a kind of map, tracing not just the path the disease had taken, but also pointing to where the nightmare truly began. With hope that the final answer was within reach, the geneticists began working alongside historian Philip Slavin, determined to unlock the secrets still lying dormant in the ancient remains from Karajigach. The quest for truth next led the scientists to the Peter the Great Museum in St. Petersburg, where the remains excavated from Karajigach had been stored for over a century. Here, the research team, in collaboration with Russian specialists, began their meticulous work they extracted DNA samples from the teeth of seven individuals, teeth being the best natural vaults for preserving traces of infectious diseases that had ended lives so long ago. The wait for test results felt endless until finally, under the microscope and through modern genetic sequencing, the truth began to emerge. DNA from three out of the seven individuals revealed an unmistakable sign, the clear presence of Yersinia pestis, the very same plague bacterium responsible for history's most terrifying pandemics. What shocked the researchers most was when they compared these genetic sequences to the global family tree of plague bacteria. What they found was not some random, isolated variant. The genetic code matched perfectly with the ancestral strain that gave rise to every branch responsible for the Black Death and all the plague outbreaks that followed for centuries. At last, the great mystery had an answer. The true starting point of the disaster was not in Europe, but in a small community on the shores of Lake Isik. Cool. Once the secret of the ancestral bacterial strain was brought to light, scientists turned to the next question. How and why did it erupt so violently and spread all the way to Europe? Studies of the climate and ecology in the region revealed that the lands around Lake Isik Cool had long been a natural reservoir for plague bacteria. Here, among endless steppes and rolling mountain slopes, Yersinia pestis quietly persisted circulating through generations of wild rodents. Marmots, large gerbils, and voles, all of them were natural hosts, living in vast colonies that tunneled beneath the earth and through the grasslands surrounding the lake. Whenever the climate shifted, when spring was unusually warm or rains heavier than normal, the rodent populations would suddenly surge. With more animals came more fleas, the most dangerous carriers of all. In this crowded environment, plague bacteria had countless chances to multiply, mutate, and, eventually, cross the boundary from animals to humans. All it took was a marmot hunted for its fur or meat, or a seemingly harmless bite from a wild rodent, to become the first link in a chain reaction, the one that would ultimately unleash an unstoppable epidemic that swept across the entire Eurasian continent. The graves at Karajigak tell not only a story of pain and loss, but also reveal something special about this community. They were not reclusive farmers. They were merchants whose trade reached across the expanse of Eurasia. In their burial sites, archaeologists found pearls from the Indian Ocean, coins from Iran, and rare Mediterranean goods. The people of this land were once a crucial link in the chain that connected East and West. It was these very connections that allowed the disease to slip quietly across borders. Crowded caravans moved along the Silk Road, carrying goods and countless pieces of luggage. Hidden deep inside cargo bales or in the crevices of wagon wheels, small but deadly black rats thrived, bringing with them hordes of plague-infected fleas. The plague followed these merchants, traveling more than 3,500 kilometers across mountains, deserts, and grasslands, eventually reaching the Crimean Peninsula and the port city of Kaffa in 1346. There, history would witness a new level of cold-blooded cruelty. During the siege of the city, Mongol forces hurled the corpses of plague victims over the walls, one of the earliest known examples of biological warfare. Not long after, Genoese merchant ships set sail from Kaffa, laden with goods, sailors, and unwittingly, plague-ridden rats. The Black Death floated west with the Genoese sails, crossed the Black Sea, 
and swept across Europe, beginning one of the most tragic chapters in all of human history. When the Genoese ships carrying the plague docked at the major Mediterranean cities, Europe unknowingly became the perfect breeding ground for this unfolding nightmare. At that time, the continent was like a bed of smoldering embers, waiting to ignite. Cities were overcrowded, streets were narrow, garbage and animal carcasses piled up right outside people's doors, and rats multiplied out of control. In every alleyway, in every dark corner, black rats and swarms of disease-carrying fleas were ever-present. No one knew what awaited them. One day, a neighbor was healthy, and the next, they had collapsed. Families were torn apart in the span of a single summer. The Black Death wiped out millions of lives in just a few short years, leaving behind abandoned villages, deserted fields, and ruined cities. But it did more than just devastate the population. The plague shook every foundation of society. Religion, law, and the very structure of the economy were forever altered in the aftermath. And even though centuries have passed, the memory of that horror remains deeply etched into Europe's collective consciousness, a permanent testament to the devastating power of disease and the fragility of humanity in the face of fate. Few could have imagined that a forgotten little cemetery on the shores of Lake Issyk Kul, Kyrgyzstan, would turn out to be the epicenter of one of the darkest chapters in human history. There, among the silent graves and weathered stones, the secret of the Black Death was guarded for nearly 700 years, waiting for the day when humanity would be patient and determined enough to piece the past back together. If you found this story compelling, leave a comment below with your thoughts or questions about this plague. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you again in the next story.